Hi everyone, we're delightful to bring you another episode of ASEAN News and here is the completion for today. Philippines begins new era after decades of overthrown. Sander Sandro Marcos. The son and namesake of late dictator Ferdinand Marcos was sworn in as the president of the Philippines on June 30th, completing a stunning comeback for one of Asia's most famous political dynasties 36 years after it was ousted in a popular uprising. Marcos Jr. scored a rare landslide victory in last month's election, helped by what his critics see as a decades-long effort to alter public perceptions of a family that lived lavishly at the helm of one of the world's most notorious kleptocracies. In speech that echoed his campaign slogans of unity, Marcos Jr., better known as Bongbong, vowed to take the country far on his watch with policies benefiting everyone. We will build back better by doing things in the light of the experiences that we have had, both good and bad. It doesn't matter. No looking back in anger or nostalgia. In the road ahead, the immediate months will be rough, but I will walk that road with you. Nobel laureate Maria Ressa promises to fight the order to close the Philippines' new site. Philippine Nobel Peace winner Maria Ressa pledges to fight an order by the corporate regulator to shut down her online news site, Rapler. Our goal is to continue holding the line. You've heard me say that forever. We're not going to voluntarily give up our rights. And we really shouldn't. I've continued to appeal for that because when you give up your rights, you're never going to get them back. The Securities and Exchange Commission affirms its 2018 ruling rescinding the operating license of Rapler for violating foreign equity restrictions on domestic media when it sold depository rights to a foreign entity. Rappler lawyer Francis Lim told an online news conference that they will seek legal remedies to question the decision that the Securities and Exchange Commission could not enforce the order pending an appeal. Ressa and Newsite Rappler were subjected to several cases in recent years, ranging from tax-related issues to cyber libel, which they claimed to be attacks on press freedom. Rappler has been known for its critical reporting on President Rodrigo Duterte's drug war. Thailand unveiled test kits to check cannabis tetrahydrocannabinol level in marijuana products. Thailand authorities unveils the country's first test kit to check whether the amount of psychoactive ingredient tetrahydrocannabinol in cannabis oil and other extracts exceeds the legal limit of 0.2%. An official says, developed by the Public Health Ministry's Department of Medical Sciences, the marijuana test kit works the same way as a COVID-19 antigen rapid self-test kit and can show results within 15 minutes. Thailand on June 9 became the first Asian country to legalize the growing and private consumption of marijuana, a move authority says would boost agriculture by giving farmers a valuable new cash crop. The position and sale of cannabis extracts containing more than 0.2% THC is not allowed. Those who break the law can still face jail and fines. The agency says the first 15,000 test kit will be distributed to the government and adding that the department will transfer the technology to the private sector for commercial production in the future. Talent, which has tradition of using cannabis to relieve pain and fatigue, legalized medicinal marijuana in 2018. Jokowi urged G7 to ensure sanctions on Russia don't affect food fertilizer supplies. Indonesian President Joko Widodo says he had urged G7 leaders to ensure the sanctions imposed on Russia did not affect the global supply of food and fertilizer. Widodo, who is the current G20 president, spoke at a news conference with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin after a meeting in Moscow. As a friend of Russia and a few days ago, during my talks with countries in the G7, I've asked for a guarantee that food from Ukraine by the sea is safe. 
Also, I asked G7 to guarantee there are no obstacles in exporting food and fertilizers. I hope that Russia will not extend the ban of exports of grains, including wheat, and not impose quota restrictions on fertilizers. Russia's war in Ukraine has exacerbated a global food crisis, sending prices soaring for grains, cooking oils, fuel and fertilizer. Russia and Ukraine account for nearly a third of global wheat supplies, while Russia is also a key global fertilizer exporter and Ukraine is a major exporter of corn and sunflower oil. Since Russia invaded on February 24, 2022, Ukrainian grain shipments from its Black Sea ports have stalled and millions of tons of grain are stuck in silos. Moscow says they are using on Kyiv to remove mines from the ports to free up shipping lanes. The Indonesian president, better known as Jokowi, met Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky on Wednesday, June 2019, after attending the G7 summit in Germany earlier in the week. After his meeting with Zelensky, Jokowi had offered to deliver a message from Kyiv to Putin. Russia is ready to meet Indonesia's demand for fertilizers. After a meeting with Indonesian President in Moscow, Joko Widodo, Russian President Vladimir Putin told reporters that Russia is ready to fulfill Indonesia's demand for fertilizers. We are ready to fulfill completed demands from Indonesian farmers and those from other friendly countries for nitrogenous, phosphate and potash fertilizers and raw materials for their production. Putin says requests from farmers in Indonesia and other friendly countries will be met in full by Russian providers. The Russian president also says Russia intends to honor its contractual obligations regarding supplies of energy, food and fertilizers abroad. Putin earlier denied that Moscow was blocking Ukrainian grain exports and questioned the impact of missing Ukrainian agricultural goods on the world food market. Chinese Foreign Minister arrives in Myanmar before the meeting of the Mekon countries. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi arrives in Myanmar in his first visit to the country since Myanmar's military junta seized power last year on February 1st after ousted government leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Wong will attend the annual regional Lanchang Mekong Cooperation Meeting in Bagan, joining counterparts from neighboring countries Thailand, Laos, Cambodia and Myanmar. The five countries' initiative led by Chinese said to cooperate on economic ties, resource sharing and on the increasing number of hydroelectric projects along the Mekong Delta. Myanmar's shadow national unity government, formed with elected members of the 2020 elections, criticized the Chinese government for Wong's presence with the military junta. A military spokesperson says foreign ministers attending the summit assume the recognition of the ruling military. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations still blocks Myanmar from attending meetings as some fellow members, such as Malaysia and Singapore, condemned the military coup. According to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, 2,000 civilians have died under the junta crackdowns. Chinese Foreign Minister attends Mekong Country's meeting in Myanmar. Chinese Foreign Minister and State Councillor Wang Yi meet with his counterparts from regional Mekong countries in Myanmar in his first visit to the Southeast Asian country since the military coup on February 2021. Footage broadcast by state television showed Myanmar's military appointed Foreign Minister Wuna Maung Luing receiving Wang and counterparts from Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos as part of the annual regional Lanchang Mekong Cooperation Meeting in Bagan. The five-country initiative led by China is said to cooperate on economic ties, resource sharing and on increasing the number of hydroelectric projects along the Mekong Delta. Meanwhile, Wong says that China hopes to push Myanmar in pursuit of political reconciliation with the help of ASEAN. Myanmar's government in exile, formed with elected members of the 2020 elections, criticized the Chinese government for Wong's engagement with the military junta. Thailand scrambles fighter jet after violation of Myanmar jet airspace. Mm -hmm. 
The Air Force says Thailand scrambled fighter jet near its border with Myanmar and ordered its defense attaché to issue a warning to the military government over what it called an airspace violation during a combat operation. Air Force spokesperson Air Vice Marshal Prapat Sunjayde says two F-16 fighter jets were deployed when a radar detected a plane in Thailand airspace close to the Myanmar border late morning. Prapart in a statement says an aircraft from a known site violated the border over Popra district in Thak province while attacking ethnic armed group along the border. <laughs> Myanmar's military has stepped up operations against ethnic minority armies since a coup last year and is encountering resistance on multiple fronts from old enemies to newly formed military groups allied with the ousted government. Activists and aid groups have condemned the junta's use of artillery and air strikes in civilian areas. The United Nations Humanitarian Agency says estimated nearly 760,000 people have been displaced by conflict across Myanmar since the coup. A witness in Thailand told Reuters a fighter jet was seen over two villages, about five from the border, triggering panic among residents, with one school sending its students to a bomb shelter. Meanwhile, the Thai Air Force says one of its attaches in Yangon had been instructed to warn relevant agencies in Myanmar and ask them to prevent future infringements. In addition, Thailand Authority says close to 300 people have been fled and intensification of military operations in Myanmar's current state in the past few days. Vice President of China puts four-point proposal on developing ties between China and Philippines. In Philippine government's invitation, Xi Jinping Presidential Delegate, Foreign Secretary Wang Qishan, on July 30, in the Philippine capital of Manila, visiting Chinese Vice President Wang Qishan put forward a four-point proposal on the development of relations between China and the Philippines. Wang attended the inauguration of Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos as the 17th President of the Philippines. At the meeting with the new Philippine president, Wong says President Marcos and his family have made great contributions to enhancing China-Philippines friendship. The two sides should properly resolve differences and jointly safeguard peace and tranquility in the South China Sea. Meanwhile, Marcos welcomed Wang's presence at his presidential inauguration ceremony and noted that the relationship between his country and China has a long history and the two peoples are close to each other. Describing China as the most powerful partner of the Philippines, Marcos stresses that good neighborly friendship is in the fundamental interest of both peoples. The new Philippine government attaches utmost importance to the relations with China and is willing to deepen its participation in the joint construction of the Belt and Road joint hands with China in coping with regional challenges and elevate the bilateral ties to a higher level, Marcos added. The Philippine Vice President Duterte Carpio says the new Philippine government will adhere to the foreign policy of good neighbor lines and friendship with China and looks forward to pushing the relationship between the Philippines and China to a higher level. Wong also met with Imelda Romualdez Marcos, mother of President Marcos. Well, that's the end for today's episode. We will see you again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. Have a lovely weekend.